is the tragic spectacle that greeted our newsreel cameramen when their plane arrived over the lonely countryside where the Crack Mountain Limited leaked from the tracks. 24 people were killed, 42 injured, when huge passenger cars were hurtled down the steep embankment like so many matchsticks. Other cars were smashed into crumpled, mangled, and smoking heaps of metal. Volunteer rescuers grimly fought against time and twisted steel. The miracle is that there were any survivors at all in this railroad disaster. One of the most tragic accidents in the nation's history. <laughs> Captain Jess Torno, chaplain and hero of the famous Saido prison camp epic, returns to his native San Francisco. Military officials had planned a formal reception for him, but this excited latecomer broke it up. Then newsmen witnessed this heartwarming scene of two brothers reunited after a long separation. Yes, military formality went AWOL as the chaplain was welcomed home by his brother, San Francisco businessman John Torno. So the army's... Hey, Johnny Torno. Ain't that the guy who got you board and room here? Yeah. That's him. Pretty glad to see you, brother, eh, Mr. Torno? You can say that again. That Johnny Torno's sure nuts about his brother, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he sure is. What do you think about San Francisco after being away for five years? Well, according to the boys in our outfit, San Francisco is a suburb of heaven, and, well, I agree with them. This way, gentlemen. Nick Cherney? Yeah. I got a warrant for your arrest. Why the pinch? Embezzlement. That's against the law, haven't you heard? Come on. Get your hands off me. Now look, chum, this isn't a parking ticket. This is a felony rap. What's the idea, Johnny? I told you I'd make good the loss. Tell these guys to lay off. I covered your shortage once, Nick. Now you're in it up to your ears. I get it. You squealed. You spilled your guts. He did not. The auditors found this shortage. And the bonding company swore out the warrant. Johnny, you gotta give me a chance. You'll get 13. One judge and 12 jurymen. Get him out of here. So, despite the weather, great crowds of people lined the street. Silently bared their heads as the funeral cortege... You get out soon, huh, Rocky? Yeah, Monday. Good behavior. How you fixed for do? Why? You want to give me some? You could use some, couldn't you? I sure could. From Miami, Florida, the latest styles in bathing suits. To say nothing of what's in the suits. Yeah. I sure could. Morning, Warney. Hiya, Jess. Hi. Think I've forgotten you? That'll be the day. <laughs> Come on, get busy and check these. Hey, wait a minute. We're visiting. He's my brother. You two haven't changed a bit. Can't say the same for the plant, though. It's wonderful what you two have done. It's half yours, no matter how you wear that collar. Hey, what is that? It's a surprise for Jess. For me? Sure. Open it. Come on. You still remember that Christmas Eve, don't you? 
I was 12 years old. I saw a clock just like this in a jewelry store window on Post Street. I guess I never wanted anything more. With less chance of getting it. That night he said, don't worry, Jess. You'll have one just like it someday. It's a little late. That isn't even Christmas. It's funny, I thought it was. I've thought so ever since you got back. Like it, Jess? Get a load of them colors. Makes you feel like you were standing at an end of a rainbow. It's beautiful, Johnny. So is the price. Twenty grand. That's a lot of refrigerated fish. Well, Johnny, this one will atone for the neighbor's windows you broke. Playing baseball in the parish yard. <laughs> oh, those were the days, hey, Jess? Well, it seemed whenever I hit a ball, it went hunting for a window. Even if it had to go around a corner to find one. Anyhow, Johnny, I want to thank you again for the gift of the window. Forget it. I played a long shot that won. Long shot? Johnny asked that prayers be offered for your safe return home. And if you made it, we'd get that. Expensive gambling, wasn't it? You're back all in one piece. And that's worth a thousand windows. Oh, we can't use that many. Maybe Jess could use a few in his new church. New church? Up in Redwood, northern part of the state. I have to leave tonight. Why are you sending him so far away? The bishop is sending me, Johnny. It's not far away. We'll see each other often. Sure we will, kid. Sure. You always wanted your own church. I'm glad you got it. I'll drive you up. We'll both take a look at it. Maybe it does need a few windows. Oh, I have to see Bishop Gannon before I go. Could you pick me up at the hotel about 8.30 tonight? I'll be there ahead of time. Good day, Father. Something very 12? Yeah, he's checking out. <laughs> Just phoned on for his bill and now he won't answer. Look, anything he gets here is on me. Wait here. Okay. Oh, Jess. Get a doctor. Johnny. 
Hang on, Jess. Doctor's coming. Who did it, Jess? Tell me. Who, Jess? Who? You gotta tell me his name. Oh, get him like he got you. What's his name, Jess? Tell me. What's his name? Bible. Written in Bible. I heard about Jess. It's terrible. Anything I can do? Nothing. I'll handle this myself. Strecker, what are you doing here? Just waiting to see you, Johnny. This is my partner, Jim Ryan, homicide. Find out who did it? Not yet. You got any ideas? A bellhop at the Carlson Hotel says your brother was alive when you found him. Johnny, did he say anything before he died? What's his name? Tell me. What's his name? Bible. Written in Bible. Johnny, did he say anything before he died? Nothing. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Don't get sore. We're looking for a motive. Your brother wasn't even robbed of anything. Only his life. Johnny, what did you mean when you said, I'll handle this myself? You know, Johnny, I watched you and Jess grow up together. I know what he meant to you. Maybe he was my brother, maybe I'd feel the same way. But it's the wrong way, Johnny. Now, I don't know anyone who'd hit that low, but maybe you do. You know, Johnny, when you play solitaire, you can only beat yourself. I told you not to bother me. Yes, I know you did, but the work's piling up. The bids on these furniture contracts and those new trucks. Handle it. 
Yes, but it's important that you check them over. The only thing important to me is this. Johnny, why are you reading that Bible? What are you looking for? I got a job to do. When it's done, then you'll know. That stuff isn't going to help. My old man always said, liquor doesn't drown your troubles, just teaches them to swim. You ought to eat something. A liquid diet's bad. That reminds me. A fellow who's been on an awful long diet's back in circulation. Nick Cherney. Nick? Yep, he's out. Big as life. He's bowling at the casino alleys on Market Street. He telephoned me at the office. He said he wanted to talk to me about a job. Can you imagine? He steals us blind and then... you live any other way. Nick. Come here. Think I've forgotten you? Well, I did for a while. Well, you know, Johnny, I've been away for a while. Where were you last Friday night? Same place I've been for four years. You're a liar. What do you mean? You lie to me once and you'd lie again. Johnny! Johnny! Johnny, take it easy. I know what you're thinking, but you're all wrong. We checked on Nick and the day of the killing, he was still in jail. That's what I was trying to tell you, Johnny. I was in prison. I only got what was coming to me, so I can't kick. I... got no hard feelings, Johnny. Lot safer in San Quentin, ain't it? Where are you going now, Johnny? Look, you haven't eaten for days. Let's go to Fisherman's Wharf. I'll order a meal that'll last you for a week. Or how about a meal at my place, huh? That's it, Johnny. Spend the night at my place, or the rest of the week. Forget that Bible that you're a part Run of. Run my business, but not my life. What are you trying to do? Wreck both of them? Johnny, you've got to straighten yourself out. You're off the track. You've got to get back on again. Johnny! Mind if I look around? Hey, what's the idea? Where's the Bible? Bible? Yeah. A Gideon Bible. There's one in every hotel room. 
Somebody took it. Who took it? There's only two kinds of customers in hotels. Them that steals Bibles and them that steals towels. Do you know who might have taken it? So many come and go. And most always they take something. How many people have had this room in the past week? About five, not including them. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Hey, uh, Mr. Tono around. Hey, Mr. Tono. Well, I got him, Mr. Tono. The people who had room 812. Now, that first one's a woman. Carla North. She left a folding address. Ken Murray's blackouts. Hollywood. Yeah, that's it. Now, that second one's a sharp character I've seen around town. Don't know what racket he's in, but I think he's hot. Bird Adams, San Francisco. Huh, could be Joe Blow. He paid for his room in advance because he had no baggage. He only stayed five minutes, then took a potter out the side entrance. The elevator man heard him say, I got the book back. Now, uh, if I spot this guy again, I'll let you know, huh? In a hurry. In a hurry. Well, Mr. Turner, it's sort of against the rules. I know, I know, I know. You I can, can lose, lose your job. job. Yeah, that's it. But if the cops say anything, you say nothing. I'm speechless. What's this? Carla North. What about it? Mr. Murray? Yeah. What can I do for you, partner? Do you know Carla North? Sure. She's still in your show? No, the act she worked in closed last night. You know where I can find her? What about it, Bert? Our forwarding address is the Samson Hotel. Yeah. That's one of those places where they stick you in a sleeping bag and hang you on a hook. It's over on Las Palmas. Does that help you? Yes. Thanks. Have you got a Miss Carla North staying here? Yeah, she's in 210, but she ain't in. You know where she is? Not me. Say, are you a dick? A friend. Oh, I didn't know she had one. She never talks to anybody. She lives alone, eats alone. She's about as chummy as Leo DeRocha with an umpire. Excuse me. Yeah? Do you mean to tell me that thing stopped up again? What do you people put in it? Well, if you're in a hurry, you can use the one in the basement. I say you can use the laundry tubs in the basement. No, no, they're not stopped up. The plumber just fixed them. Yeah. staying until you and I have a little talk. Look, miss, there's some questions I want to ask you, and it's very important that you give me the right answers. About three weeks ago, you occupied room A12 in the Carlson Hotel in San Francisco. Did I? 
Did you take the Gideon Bible from that room? Wait. All right, Miss North, start talking. Look, Mr. Gideon, I didn't take your Bible, and if I had, I'd certainly give it back to you. It might improve your manners. Did you see a Bible in that room? I told you I don't know anything about it. You're lying. I said I wanted the right answers, now give them to me. Explain this. Well, that's mine. Give it to me. Why? Because it... it means a lot to me. It's... all I have left of someone I love very much. Who? My brother. Your brother? Tommy. He was killed three days after that picture was taken. It was sent to me with his belongings by the chaplain in the outfit. The man in the center. Jess. You know him? He was my brother. Was? Didn't you know he was dead? Oh, no. If you plan on leaving, where will you go? East, maybe. Looking for a job? I have to eat. Like the food in San Francisco? It's wonderful. Only one thing wrong with it. It costs money. I can fix that. I got a job for you. What sort of a job? Well, it's, uh... I'll explain when we get up there. Why can't you explain down here? John Torno, Torno Freight Line, San Francisco. It's strictly business? No strings? Never use them. Well, if I don't have to drive a truck, I'll take a chance. Good. Get packed. We'll leave on the first plane out. Mr. Torno. Vincent, this is the young lady I phoned you about, Miss Carla North. How do you do, Vincent? How do you do, Miss North? I'm to stay here. It's better than the hotel, isn't it? Well, it's lovely, but... The rent might be more than I care to pay. There won't be any. Oh? No, uh, don't worry about it. Excuse me. He just works for the exercise? He goes with the place. Excuse me. Hi, Mr. Tono. Listen, I just went to a bookie's place to make a bet for a guest. And I spotted him, that sharp character who had 812. Right after her. Bert Adams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only his name's... Only his name's Max Appleby. He runs a horsepower on Post Street, near Paul. Thanks. Oh, thank you. I hope I can make that theft. I got about three more minutes. I can make it. Thanks. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, you like it? When you ask questions, Mr. Torno, you want the right answers. Well, so do I. This is your apartment, isn't it? It was. Now it's yours. I want you to work from here. You're in the trucking business. You have an office. Why don't I work there? This job has got nothing to do with the company. Like I said, it's something personal. Too personal, I'm afraid. Vincent. Yes, miss. Get my bags, please. So soon? Hold it, Vincent. Look, Miss North. I'm trying to help you because you can help me. But I want you to get this straight. I don't want any more from you than I do from the rest of my employees. 
So if you still want Vincent to get your bags, just say so. All right, Mr. Tono. What are my duties? I want you to locate some people out of the city. I do it myself, but I have to stick around town. You have my office number where I can be reached at any time. I've been here three times looking for Max Appleby. For the third time, I'm telling you, he ain't here. Where is he? In Florida, getting a tan. Why didn't you listen to me, you fathead? I told you to ensure the pet. We would have got track guards. Track guards. Take a little, leave a little. Good night, Max. Max, eh? Hey, blow, will you? I ain't answering no more dopey questions. You're Max Appleby. Now, listen, Chester, I ain't talking. Where's the barber you took from the Hotel Carlson two weeks ago? Where's the what? I took when? Spill it! When you left there, you said I got the book back. Oh, no. Wait, you heard wrong. I said I had to get back to my book. I left it here. This book. Every bet I take is written in here. I lose this. I'm out of business. Why did you take a room only for five minutes? I wanted to hide out there. Ethel, my ex-wife, is hounding me for back alimony, chasing me with processed servants. Why do I have to tell you? Ain't you her lawyer? No. Look. Did you take it or see a Bible in that room? Listen, pal, I didn't see nothing or take nothing. Set myself out of there in a hurry. Like I said, I had to get back to my book. Okay. Forget it. Beef, Max. Do I look like a Bible thief? What? That character thought I'd snatch a Bible from the Carlson Hotel. The Carlson? I wonder why he wants it. Who cares? Long shot players in the back room taking the book apart. Out here, it's screwballs. And maybe I should better go back to Ethel. Nothing but trouble since. Ballistics check the bullets. Army issue. Like a million of them these days. Fingerprints? None. So it looks like Jess walked in on a sneak thief. Or maybe it's a psycho case. Some warped mine. Sure, we bump into plenty of them psycho cases. Remember the guy down on Pacific Street? He's a taxidermist. You know, he stuffs birds and animals. But he's got a mother-in-law who's always eating and stuffing herself. She's always eating. One day she's sitting at the table, still eating. So the guy blows his top, grabs a meat cleaver, and wham! And there she is, still sitting, with a piece of buttered toast in her hand and no place to put it. If you guys don't know nothing, why don't you go home and polish your badges? Oh, we know a few things, like you're going to Hollywood and you're living here while a girl's got your apartment. It's my apartment and my business. Oh, Johnny, look at this place. Look at you. Pulled up here like a wounded animal. You're giving yourself a beating. You're cracking up. I'll last long enough to get the dirty... We got a gas chamber for that. But you won't have anybody to put in it if you sit around here on the broad end of your back. We might have a little more luck if you remembered something we could use. A dying man usually says something. Especially to a brother. Let the law handle it, Johnny. I can't wait that long. Well, hello, Mick. Drinker. What do you want? I wanted to see you, Johnny. It's kind of tough getting work once a guy's done a stretch. You know, people kind of put the finger on you. You blaming me? Or us? Johnny, you know how it is when a guy is down. Mr. Torno. Yes? Miss North's on the line, says it's important. Johnny, I... I need a break. A job. Anything to help me get started. I'll think about it. See me later. Yeah. Sure, Johnny. Sure. Your next stop is Reno.
these names, they're all part of the same thing, aren't they? That Bible. Oh, I keep forgetting you don't like to explain things. Don't let it worry you. But it does. You said I could help you, and I'd like to, because you need help. There's something bottled up inside of you. Something driving you. Hurting you. If I only knew what it was. You better get something to eat and turn in. Catch the morning plane to Reno. As soon as you spot this wall of stoner, phone me. Good night. Give you a job? You, here? Give you another crack at the books? Johnny would never stand for it. He said he'd think it over. If you could just put in a good word for me. I know, Nick, I know. Let it ride for a few days. Johnny isn't seeing anyone lately. He's still that upset, huh? I know how he must feel. Losing Jess hit him pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet. Okay, I'm on my way. Yes, Johnny? Come in a minute, Warney. Yeah, right away. You spoke to him about a job? Yeah, he... he said he'd think it over. Well, I don't get it. But I'll see what he says. Are you leaving town again? I just got a call. I have to run over to Reno. Reno? But that's not our territory. It's personal. You still looking for that Bible from the Carlson Hotel? Sure, sure. You've got a right to do as you like, but you're letting this get you down, Johnny. And the business is going down with you. It's a one-man outfit, Johnny. Without you, it'll fall apart. That's why you've got to stay here. Warning. I guess I owe you an explanation. You're the only one that knows when I found Jess, he was still alive. Yes, I know. When I asked Jess who shot him, he said... Bible. Written in the Bible. What did he write? The murderer's name? Yes in the Gideon Bible that was taken from room 812. But why are you going to Reno? I'm going to see a man named Wallace Stoner. He's one of the few people who had that room after Jess died. Johnny, I don't want to butt in, but why don't you let the cops handle it? I'll handle it my way. Johnny, if you need me or anything, call. I'll be here tonight working. Stoner's in there. He's a short order cook. Is he on duty now? Yes, he works nights. But don't eat there. They serve bicarbonate for dessert. Wait here. Don't 
on ahead. Hey, Wally! Front and center! You want to see me, son? You're Wally Stoner? Yes, sir, that's me. Son, you selling insurance? Because if you are... About three weeks ago, you had room A12 at the Carlson Hotel, San Francisco. I sure did, and I got swindled. I never saw such room service. I put my teeth in a glass of water, and the next morning the glass was gone, and so was my teeth. Did you ever try gone without your teeth? Not yet. Listen, did you take a Bible from that room? You tell me. Drive to the Globe Hotel.
I'll get in there. Now open that. Open it. Looking for a recipe? Well, you've got one for trouble. Wrong book, eh? You are looking for a Gideon Bible from the Carlson Hotel. Why? You got me all wrong. I don't know what you're talking about. You know plenty. And I'm going to make you spill it if I have to kick it out of you. Pigeon, all I'm getting out of this is a lot of bad health. I said I'd take care of you. Sure you will. But you gotta get another boy. I'm retiring. On full pay. You running out on me? No. I'll be around often to collect. Not if the cops find your name in that Bible. Maybe they'll find yours. Mine? Yeah, I just remembered. Before I let that guy have it, I said something. What do you mean? I said, here's a little present from Nick. So maybe I ain't in a spot. Maybe you are. Huh, Nick? <laughs> Johnny. What do you mean, Trip? Heard you on the phone this morning. Thought you told somebody you had to go to Reno. No. No, I didn't go. I'm sorry. I told someone you did. Who? I don't know. When I said you had to go to Reno, he left so fast I didn't even get his name. But he was awful anxious to see you. About a job, he said. A little fat guy. It's all right. I know who it was. Thanks. Hello, Vincent. Has Johnny come back yet? He hasn't. Well, I'm still at the office, but I'm going home now. When he comes, tell him to call me. It's important. Okay. Who is it?
Yes, I know, Vincent. I just came from the office. If you're ready to leave, here's the next man to locate. Pablo Cabrillo, Cordero Road, Monterey. He's the last one on the list. I gotta hurry back to the plant. Wait. After what happened in Reno last night, I want to know just what I mixed up in. All you're doing is locating some people. There's more to it than that. And I'm not locating anyone else for you until I find out why you want them. That's my business. You've made it mine, too. I was with you in Reno last night when you nearly shot a man. And before anything else happens, I insist on knowing why you want that Bible. What's in it? What's it got to do with your brother? When I find it, then I'll know who killed him. That's a job for the police. It's my job. You can't take the law into your own hands. Things aren't done that way. That depends on who's doing them. I raised Jess from a kid. Watched him grow up to what he was. Good and kind and sound as a tree. He was all I ever had to love. And I'll get who killed him if it's the last thing I do. I'm sorry I brought you into this, but I can't stop now. You've got to before you destroy yourself. If that's what it takes, all right. But it's the wrong way. It's my way. Your way? Who do you think you are, Johnny Torno? Somebody who doesn't have to live by the rules of ordinary people? Rules? What rules? There must be some way to make you see that you can't go on like this, Johnny. I lost a brother, too. You have to understand that you're not the only one who ever lost someone dear to him. People die every day. Not the way Jess did. Thinking of him is what's hurting you. You've got to forget him. The living have to forget the dead. I'm sorry. Sorry? You were never sorry for anything or anyone. Nobody means anything to you. All because of your blind hate for somebody you don't even know. Well, you're headed for a smash-up, Johnny. And it's bound to come because you won't let anyone help you. Well, you can take it alone. Your key. I'll send for my things. Wait. Aren't you forgetting something? Keep it. Those criminal lawyers come high. Leaving town again, Johnny? Any law against it? Maybe, in your case. I have to make trips. I run a trucking business. With a gun? The Reno police called us. They found your wallet last night. In a taxi outside of a hotel where some shooting took place. Know anything about that, Mr. Torno? No. He never knows anything. Well, there's one thing we want you to know, Johnny. When a murderer is caught, he belongs to the law. You can have him. After I'm through. Okay, we're putting a 24-hour watch on you, right now. Wherever you go, you'll have plenty of company. Hey, Red, come here.
Pablo Cabrillo live here? Sí. Si. Which one is he? Pablo está con Trina. Pablo is with his wife. Over there. Pablo Cabrillo? Oh. Yes, you wish to see me? My name is John Tono. Did you take a Bible from the Carlson Hotel, room 812? Yes. Yes, I did. I want it. But, Mr. Tono, it means so much to me. I said I want it. Now! Let him alone. Don't you touch him again. He's blind. The war, senor. I'm sorry, I... I didn't know. But... Why did you take the Bible? Because I was blind. And afraid. Mr. Torno. My people have little money, but... Much happiness. I didn't wish to spoil that happiness, but... I knew their hearts would be filled with pity. I knew I could be nothing but a burden to them, so... when I was finally discharged from the army hospital, instead of coming home, I... I went to a hotel. The door was locked, the windows shut. I was alone. In my mind, there was only one thought. If I were dead, I would never be a burden to anyone. I had made my prayers to God and begged his forgiveness for what I meant to do. I found my gun. I raised it. Suddenly, I felt a cold wind touch my face. It seemed like the hand of God trying to stop me. But despair drove me on. I tried again, but a man's anguished cry stopped me. He took my gun. This man, whom I knew only through the kindness in his voice, kept me from killing myself. He said there must be some way to help, but I was sick with despair. Then we both heard a fluttering sound. It was the pages of the hotel Bible on the table. The stranger said I was wrong to feel as I did because I was blind. For in the good book it was written, we walk by faith and not by sight. For a moment there was silence. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make the darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things I will do unto them and not forsake them. He read to me a long time. And as he read, these words written so long ago with love for all mankind, these words were like light, driving the darkness from my heart. My eyes were still blind, but within me I began to see all things more clearly than ever before. These words, from a hotel Bible, read to me by a man whose name I never knew, gave me faith and hope and the courage to live again. I'm glad for you. But the Bible, I gotta have it. Please, come to my house. Pablo, que pasa? It's all right, Mom. Please, get the hotel Bible for this gentleman. But Pablo, it is gone. 
Gone? Yes, mister. Someone took it. Maybe an hour ago. What did he look like? Tell me. It was a woman. She asked Mama about a hotel Bible. And when I show her the book, she grabbed it, ran to car, and go away quick. What did she look like? It was so fast. I only see she is young and pretty. You people are lying to me. Mr. Torno, you may search our house. In here. Are you sure? What did you expect when you came here with bitterness toward God and man? Don't give me all that malarkey about doing to others as you would have them do unto you. Sure, Jess went for that stuff and what did it get him? A bunch of lilies and six silver handles. Faith is something precious, something to treasure. Lose faith and you are lost. Faith. Seek and ye shall find. Well, what have I found? Nothing. Meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah. Six feet of it like Jess. Listen to me, Johnny Tono. And realize that when you do, you are listening to Jess himself. Ah, save it. I know the answers, too. Sure, I read them in a book. And they all add up to nothing. Like the candle of the wicked shall be put out. The guy who digs the pit shall fall therein. There's truth in his words. You must have patience. Lots of patience. And believe. Believe in what? Save all that bunk for your Sunday suckers. What I want is 24-hour service. Well, I'm finished with all that eyewash. I'm selling out. It's only a window, Johnny. I'm concerned with what's broken within you. Hello, Mr. Torno. Yes, she just called. She say she will send for her luggage when she reach her hotel. She say what hotel? Oh. Hotel? Have you and Miss Carla North registered there? I 
was here today, Johnny, but they said you were out of town. I just got back. Not there? Thanks. I saw the light burning, so I thought I'd come up. Still want a job? Yeah, I sure do. Well, you've got one. Use the outside phone. Call this list of hotels. Ask for a Miss Carla North. I want to talk to her. Carla North. Sure, Johnny, anything you say. Aldrich Hotel. Is there a Miss Carla North registered there? I'm Miss North. Oh. Johnny's been trying to get hold of you. I don't blame him. Where is he? Inside. I called your apartment, Johnny. Vincent said you were here. So you took it? Yes, Johnny. Give it to me. sent for you. Bellhop's talk, Johnny. I know what you're looking for. Go ahead, open it. If you don't, we will. I turned the page down for you, Johnny. Right here. Romans, chapter 12, verse 19. There's no name in it. Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, we've got something. After you bottled us up in the yard today, we came up here and found a gun. Here it is. Where'd you get it? Why? Because this gun killed your brother. And I had my hands on him. Give us a description, we'll pick him up. When you do, you'll find him in pieces. Johnny, you can't. That isn't what Jess wanted. Johnny, can't you understand what Jess wrote here? That doesn't tell me anything. It tells you everything Jess wanted you to know. It's not enough. Johnny. Don't listen to me anymore, but you've got to realize what Jess tried to tell you. His last thought was for you. He knew you and wanted to protect you. And if you loved him, then read it, Johnny, because it was the last thing your brother asked of you. Read it and try to understand its meaning. Beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Johnny, thou shalt not kill. Sick. 
Come on down. Prowler, started shooting. I got him. That's him. He had that gun. Get him. He paid me. Don't move. Yeah, Tono. I paid for the job. Paid him with your money. Understand your money. Money you sent me to prison for taking. Understand, Torno? Your cash paid for the gun that killed your own brother. How do you like that for a payoff, Torno? Yeah, it hurts, don't it? Yeah, you're all cut up and bleeding inside. Yeah, that's where it hurts. Inside. Sure. That's the way I planned it, Torno. But I got a better plan now. Special. For you. I'm giving you a one-way ticket to... Johnny, 
your brother believed that somebody else was on the job, looks like he was right. <laughs> 